God exceeds your expectations. So the question I have for you is, what are you expecting? Joseph is one of the one of the 12 sons of Israel, who's also known as Jacob. He's one of the 12 sons. Joseph was Jacob's favorite son. Why was he J uh, Jacob's favorite son? Because he was a firstborn of Rachel. And because Joseph was the favorite of Jacob, he was given this coat of multicolors, a beautiful, beautiful coat. So Jacob's or Joseph's walking around looking all fine, looking all fly with his coat, looking all good. And at 17 years old, Joseph had this dream. He had this dream where a bunch of stars were happening and he saw all these stars lighting up and all of a sudden stars started bowing down to another star. And this is what happened. He had a dream and it's this crazy, crazy dream. But Joseph acted like an idiot. He goes and he tells his brothers about the dream and says, brothers, the dream means that all of you who are all my older brothers are going to bow down to me. Well, obviously, like most brothers would, they didn't like that. In fact, they hated it. In fact, they started to hate him. So what they did is they took him, they put him in a pit, and they were going to kill him. But then the oldest brother, Reuben, said, no, guys, we shouldn't kill him, but maybe what we should do is let's sell him. So there was a tribe of Ishmaelites that were coming by. The brothers, what they do is they go ahead and they sell Joseph and these Ishmaelites, they buy him into the slave trade and they bring him over to Egypt. The brothers tell the dad, Jacob, Joseph is dead. We're so sorry. They obviously lied. So now we've got a scene like I read in Genesis at the beginning of Genesis, in Genesis chapter 48. And this scene is, is you have Jacob who's in his twilight years. He is actually on the verge of dying. And he says this one sentence to him. See, Jacob wants to bless Joseph. But he says, now I want you to hear this because this is incredibly important here. So Genesis 48 verse 10. Now the eyes of Israel, who's also Jacob, were dim with age so that he could not see. So Joseph brought them, which is his sons, near him. And he kissed them and embraced them. And Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see your face. And behold, God has let me see your offspring also. I never expected to see you again, my son. You see, for Jacob, Jacob spent time with Joseph for the first 17 years of his life and then never saw him again. Thought he was dead. But now all of a sudden, he finds out not only is his son alive, but he has grandkids. It has exceeded what his expectations were. He expected to never see his son. Now he sees his son and he sees his son's sons. Talk about an amazing miracle that happens. He didn't expect. And I want to remind you, this is the only point, the single point that all this is going to point, that all this is about today, is that God doesn't just meet your expectations. God exceeds your expectations. So the question I have for you is, what are you expecting? Have you just been subject to, okay, my expectation is this world sucks. My life has been crappy, or I've had horrible circumstances, or maybe you've had bad health. Maybe you expect certain things. I wanna remind you to elevate our expectations and know that God can exceed, and God has exceeded every single one of our expectations. It's up to us to keep our eyes on him and to keep our faith up and keep our hope up. So how many of us are actually settling for expectations? I wanna bring you back to the story here. So not only is Jacob alive, no, sorry, not only is Joseph alive, but his grandkids are alive. Now, Jacob is getting ready to bless J his son, Joseph, and his grandchildren. And there's a really interesting story here. Because in this blessing, in this thing that's happening, there's tradition that goes on. Normally, what you do is you bless your son, and you bless the firstborn. But what does Jacob do? Well, Jacob here in this moment, he bucks the trend. He changes this up because this is also a foreshadowing of how God brings all of us into his family and that we are rightful heirs. So what he does, what Jacob actually does is he says, bring the children unto me. Bring Ephraim and Manasseh, who are Joseph's sons. Manasseh is the firstborn of Joseph. Ephraim is the secondborn. He brings them and he's going to go and bless the kids. And normally the right hand stands for this beautiful blessing. There's a lot of parallels with what the right hand means. And normally the right hand would be placed on the firstborn. But what Jacob does is he puts his right hand on Ephraim, who is the secondborn. And he bucks the trend and he changes the trend that's going on here. And in this moment, in this moment, he is changing the expectation of what's happening. He is showing that there is this beautiful blessing 
Manasseh is still going to be great. Manasseh is going to be a great people. But Ephraim, I am putting my, I am putting my blessing on Ephraim. He wasn't supposed to receive a blessing. That was an interesting change. Also, Jacob was supposed to pass on the blessing to Joseph. But he goes again and bucks the trend and he goes to the grandkids and passes on a blessing to them. They were supposed to wait 40 more years or so for when Joseph blesses them. But Jacob bucks the trend again. What he's doing here, again, it's a beautiful foreshadowing and it's a beautiful type to showing, to showing that these guys are going to be receiving this blessing out of the favor of what Jacob is giving. And this reminds me of a couple beautiful scriptures in Ephesians 1 verse 3 and Romans 8 verse 14 to 15. Is that just as all of them were children, you and I are also children of God. We are grandchildren, great-grandchildren. We are heirs. We are heirs by adoption. God adopted us and brought us into his family. If you read Romans 8, 14 to 15, for all who are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. This is reminding you, just like Ephraim did not deserve the blessing or was the rightful heir of the blessing, you and I, God has adopted us because of the goodness of his heart and his mercy and his love and his grace and what he showed through Jesus Christ. So you and I are heirs to him, to the blessing. What is that blessing? It's the blessing of grace, the blessing of favor, the blessing that follows us every single days of our life. If you turn to Ephesians 1 verse 3, it also says here, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through, the, through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will. Why am I switching it to this? Is just as Jacob switch things up and gave blessing to the grandchildren and give it not only to the first, but he gave it to the second born. See, oftentimes we can think, well, I don't deserve what God has for me. I don't deserve what's going on in my life. God is telling you that he's bucked the trend, that all you have to do is faith in Jesus and automatically you are part of the sonship. You are a daughter or a son. You are heirs through adoption. You get access to everything. So no matter what may be going on in your world, maybe there's crazy fear that's happening. Maybe you hate the stance of what's going on in our countries. Maybe you feel like you're fearful because of sickness is all over the world. Maybe you feel all these things are pushing at you. I want to remind you of one thing, that you, through faith in Jesus, you are a son, which means, or a daughter, which means that you are subject as an heir to what God has for you. That is the favor, that is the favor and the grace of God. Now favor, I want to find, favor is not fair. So circumstances might be crap, but favor says that's following you and that you've got God's best going before you. God's favor is on your life. God's favor and God's grace is not dependent on circumstances. God's favor and grace is not dependent upon political ideologies. God's favor and grace is not dependent upon who's running your city, your province, your country. It's not dependent upon that. God's favor and grace on your life is dependent on Jesus. And he secured it, he bought it, he paid for it, and your faith in him makes you have access to it no matter what's going on around you. So if there's chaos, if there's stuff going on, you are a son and a daughter of Christ. And with that, you can use that for your advantage. You can use that to walk through life. You can use that to be a champion, just like Joseph found himself in a pit, found himself in prison, and he also found himself elevated to second in command in the most powerful in Potiphar's house. He found himself out of prison to second in command in the country. Just like things can happen all the time suddenly in the Bible, you know the word suddenly is all through the Bible? Things were just going along and suddenly something happened. I believe that right now in your life, in your world, that you might feel, if you feel like things aren't going good, hey, put your eyes back on God. Remind yourself of the story of Joseph. Remind that you've got favor and grace following you. And remember, suddenly things can change. 
from the prison to the palace in a blink of an eye. Your life is waiting. Your life is waiting for favor and grace to be able to work all over it. Just keep your eyes on Jesus. Stop getting distracted by the chaos. Stop getting distracted by bad news. Stop getting distracted by friends that are bad news bears all the time. Stop getting distracted by things that's going on that is not truth. Look at the truth. Jesus is the truth. The word of God is the truth. Get your eyes focused on that and re be reminded that it's yours to take favor and grace operating all over your life. If you remember that, if you dive into God's word, if you use this story of Joseph, to just be reminded that God can use anything. God can use people who don't look like they should be used. God can use people in circumstances and situations that might be very grim, but God's power supersedes all. And you've got access to that. Jesus brought that to you. And that's the beautiful thing about Joseph and this story is that Joseph kept his eyes on God and God kept using him despite the circumstances that was around him. I wanna remind you, from the pit to the palace, in the prison, God was with Joseph always. God is with you. He is there for you. He loves you. He's supporting you. He wants to champion you. He wants to walk you through. He wants to heal you. He wants to protect you. He wants to provide for you. All of these things is God's heart. And we can draw upon that when our faith is in Jesus and our eyes are on him. I want to remind you, keep your head up. Keep your faith up. Keep your hope up. Keep your eyes focused on truth so that no matter what comes your way is that God will use you, elevate you, protect you, lead you through, bring breakthrough and provision. I'm believing as I'm speaking this that you guys are receiving this for your life and the people that you love.